Now in today's video we're taking a look at the civilian series cases by UAG for the iPhone 14 Pro series. We've got the MagSafe version and the non-MagSafe version. Let's check them out. So we've got the UAG civilian cases here, like I said, we've got the MagSafe and the non-MagSafe version. The non-MagSafe colorway is Dark Earth and then the MagSafe colorway is Olive. Before we get into the cases, let's take a look at the box. So these two cases, they do actually come with 20 feet drop protection, which is pretty impressive. And if we look on the back, they've got a few features. So we've got impact resistant bumpers. So that's the orange bumpers on the front. And then we've got shock absorption soft core. So that's the in between the bumpers, the black material. Then we've got feather light armor shell. So the hexagon type pattern on the inside to absorb shock. And wireless charging compatibility, which is something I definitely want to test. Because if you watch my previous video, when I talked about the Monarch Pro series and how much it disappointed me, the biggest disappointment there was the MagSafe strength. Not sure if it was the actual strength of the magnets or the alignment, but overall that was a very disappointing case. I actually used this case, spoiler alert, I used it for about a week and I've got to say it's definitely in my top five, but we will go through in this video testing out the MagSafe if it works properly and stuff like that, so you can see for yourself. So these basically are gonna fit the same so for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to put on the MagSafe version. There are some slight differences, so I will show that with the non-MagSafe version as well. So I've got my gold iPhone 14 Pro. And let's pop the case on the phone. So I have to say straight away, super snug fit. And when it comes to being loose anywhere, it's the only place that's loose is the typical places you see, which is the volume and power buttons, but not by much, just because of the lack of material and reinforcement around there. But that happens in about 99% of cases, so nothing to worry there. I do like the accent of the orange and the black. Definitely makes the phone look a bit nicer in the front. When it comes to the cutout, so the cutout for the mute toggle switch, you can see there, that is super precise. And surprisingly, it's such a small hole, but it's not hard to turn on and off, which is great. On the bottom, we've got the very precise cutout for your speakers, microphone, and power, which are always nice to see. And then we've got side sections if you wanna put in lanyards and carry your phone around on a lanyard. Not something I'm interested in, but you do you. When it comes to camera protection, we've got that raised lip to protect the lenses of your camera. So if you do drop it on the back, you should be quite safe with that. I mean, it's got 20 feet drop protection for a reason, so I don't see any issues with that. And then the buttons are nothing special, as you can see. They're not your usual buttons that you can remove. They're just molded into the actual material. But surprisingly, they are very tactile and they feel very good, so no complaints there. So with the Civilian Series case, the MagSafe one, if we take a look, you can see that you get a fair bit of lip on there, nothing too extreme, but it does keep the case nice and slim while also giving you all that protection. Something I've really liked about this case, when once I put it on, it gives you that feel, you know how the iPhone feels without a case, you've got them solid sides, like a squarish uh, feeling, this case is super, super slim. So if you take a look at that case, 20 feet of drop protection, that is a super slim case in my opinion. If I was to compare it to, so for example, I've got the Nomad rugged case here, also quite a protective case. And if we was to compare them side by side, you can see that the rugged case is a fair bit thicker than the civilian case for UAG. And that's definitely something you notice when you put the case on is how it feels in the hands that it's not a thick case by any means but it will definitely give you that that um, high level of protection which is something I was very happy about. The things that this case lacks in my opinion is it lacks some sort of grip. Now whether that be adding some sort of grip on the sides or something on the back it's just a very smooth case when it comes to the material on the back and the sides. So you don't really get that much grip. Luckily it has them flat edges, which do give you something to hold on to. I mean, let's face it, at 20 feet of drop protection, even if it did fall out, 
you're probably safe anyway. There are some differences when it comes to the non-MagSafe version and the MagSafe version, so I will put the phone in the non-MagSafe version as well, just to go over what the differences are, just because I think they are quite substantial. So again, very smooth fit, very nice feeling. As you can see on the back, looks very nice. If we look at the non-MagSafe version, we can see that the power button is noticeably bigger than the MagSafe version. And if we move over to the volume up, volume down, volume up, volume down buttons appear to be of the same size. However, the cutout for the mute toggle switch is far, far larger on the non-MagSafe version case. And then the non-MagSafe version has this UAG branding on the side. Other than that, they seem quite identical in my opinion. So it's all up to you if you want to get the non-MagSafe version if you're not really into MagSafe. Or if you are into MagSafe, grab the MagSafe version. The majority of cases for the iPhone 14 Pro series, what they've been doing now, improving upon last time, is the bottom section of the camera bump. Most manufacturers have been removing this bit just because it does interfere a lot with the MagSafe magnet and um, the placement of the MagSafe accessories. UAG have decided to keep it on. So we'll see if that is a good choice or not. So I've got a variety of different MagSafe accessories here. So we've got the mouse wallet accessory. Fits on there perfectly fine. Looks quite good in my opinion. And if we shake it, it's not coming off, which is a good thing for a wallet accessory because the last thing you want is that falling off and losing it. So number one's passed. We've got this MagSafe power bank by Oysel, which I've also reviewed on the channel. Magnetize is on, but I just want to show you how close it gets to that camera bump. And that's exactly why a lot of these manufacturers have been removing that bottom section just so accessories can get a can get a proper fit when it comes to the magnets. But oh there you go. I don't know how much you'll be shaking the power bank once it's on your phone but it clamps on there nice. But if you do shake it quite hard, it will come off, which is probably to be expected. Definitely an improvement on the Monarch Pro, I have to say. This one I can actually use. The Monarch Pro ones, I think, were just unusable to begin with. And then we've got this Momax wireless power bank, MagSafe one, with a cool design. So I pop that one on. And again, comes super close to the camera cutout. And if I do shake it, it will fall off just because it is a bit heavier. But, I mean, when you've got power banks on, you usually put it in your pocket or you put it in a place where you're not going to be running around freely or shaking your phone aggressively. So I wouldn't really worry about that. And these lighter MagSafe accessories work perfectly fine with it just because they don't have that heft or heaviness to uh, affect it and come undone. And of course, it is, if I put it on the MagSafe charger, it is MagSafe compatible. So all in all, great case. It is priced at around $60, and I believe the non-MagSafe version is around $50. So quite pricey, but you are paying for 20 feet drop protection to protect your investment of over $1,000. So bear that in mind. I hope you liked this video. I hope that helped you. More case videos coming out very soon. So if you like this one, leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell to be notified of more videos coming out. Appreciate you watching. And if you had to choose, which one would you choose? Would you go for the Dark Earth or would you go for the Olive one? Let me know in the comments box below and I'll catch you on the next one.